on tonight's edition of Facts in 5. Allergies. Are food allergies increasing in incidence? We've all become aware of the rapid spreading of food allergies, especially the rise of peanut allergies in young children in the United States. But why have some of these allergies spread to a huge portion of the population? Investigative reporter Corinne Stinson explains tonight on Facts in 5, Allergy Edition. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Facts in 5. As Jeff said, I'm Corinne Stinton, and tonight's edition is all about food allergies. Have you noticed that in your local grocery store, they've dedicated an aisle to products to accommodate people with food allergies? Many packaged foods have recently been labeling their products to inform customers if it contains ingredients such as soy, wheat, nuts, or dairy. It's no surprise that these companies are making these accommodations for customers considering the growing number of people who now have food allergies. We have started to see that common food allergies have affected children the most. According to foodallergy.com, researchers have estimated that up to 15 million Americans have food allergies, and the allergies are affecting one in every 13 children under the age of 18 in the United States. The economic cost of children's food allergies is nearly $25 billion per year. In 2013, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention found that food allergies among children increased approximately 50% between 1997 and 2011. Some of the most common allergens are peanuts, which tripled between 1997 and 2008, milk, eggs, tree nuts, soy, wheat, fish, and shellfish. All of these allergies are mostly found in children and babies, but most of these allergies cannot be outgrown. Public schools have also started to make accommodations for their young students by implementing rules against snacking in classrooms and by providing tables that are strictly peanut-free in the lunchroom. Before we go into detail about some of the allergies, let's look at the basic information about food allergies. A food allergy is commonly described as an inappropriate response by the immune system that results in symptoms. Our immune system keeps us from disease by recognizing a foreign invader when it enters the body and in response releases defense chemicals known as inflammatory mediators. Food allergies are caused by both genetic and environmental factors. People who have genetic allergies develop them because they have a genetic predisposition. Some research has shown that a delayed introduction to solid foods until the age of one may be associated with higher risks of developing allergies, especially with peanuts. Current guidelines from American-based pediatric allergists recommend that parents delay the introduction of solid foods until four to six months. Whenever we are sick, we immediately turn to antibiotics to fix our symptoms. Antibiotics have been handed out left and right for any problem a patient has, and of course, it comes with consequences. With the overuse of antibiotics, the drug has taken over for the immune system by fighting off common bacterial infections, which weakens the immune system. Along with the overuse of antibiotics, the main problem behind allergies increasing in incidence, especially for peanut allergies, is due to our improved living standards. More rigorous cleaning has exposed children to fewer microbes, which has weakened their immune system. Many of us are guilty of buying different household cleaning products and disinfecting cleaners to make sure we kill off all of the germs around our household. Using these products have helped to cut the risk of infectious diseases, but the act of over-sanitizing and disinfecting our surfaces have increased the rate of allergies worldwide with the highest rates in North America. When we look at our immune system, we see there are two different functions, recognition and response. And the recognition function works with both antigens and epitopes. There are two types of immune systems. One is the adaptive immune system, and one is the innate immune system. For this specific case, we're going to focus on the adaptive immune system. This immune system has T cells, which have the T helper cells, and B cells, which work with antibodies. When we look at antibodies that deal with food allergies, we have to look at the antibodies called immunoglobins. There are different types of immunoglobins, but the one that we want to focus on is IgE, since it deals specifically with allergies. To put it into perspective, say someone is eating a peanut. The peanut contains nutrients such as carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. When the immune system is recognizing the components of the peanut, the IgE antibody might recognize the protein and respond by attacking it. 
causing a sensitization. The reason for this response is due to an imbalance of T helper cells. In our bodies, we have cells called the T helper cells 1 and T helper cells 2 that work with our immune system. The T helper cells 1 fight off bacteria for the immune system, but due to an increased antibiotics use, the immune system doesn't have bacteria to fight off and essentially gets bored. Its reaction is to start attacking normal foods that are safe for our body through the T helper cells too, which mainly causes an allergy response. This reaction goes hand in hand with the definition of a food allergy. The difference between a food allergy and a sensitization is mainly focused on the balance between T helper cells one and two. The higher the T helper cell two level, the more severe of an allergy. When we look specifically at peanut allergies, the main hypothesis of its increase over the years is that Americans are becoming too clean by using these antibacterial products. Their children aren't being exposed to the bacteria they need to keep their immune system strong, so it starts to attack food. That concludes tonight's episode. I'm Corinne Stinton. Thanks for watching.